Hey everybody, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done a flint napping video. Check out my other videos if you want to get a fresh start on the series. Today I'm going to show you how to make nice pressure flaking. Now, this is a pretty patterned pressure flaking, but I know the problem a lot of you have is driving a flake far enough across the piece. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about materials. I'm using slabs. This video is going to be about slabs, which you would get from a tile saw. And you can order these online. Uh, Neolithics.com is the one I usually go to. Now glass is going to be the easiest thing to pressure flake. You can drive a flake probably all the way across this, no problem. And then there's fiber optic glass. This stuff, no problem either. It's like candy. It's like hard candy. Now moving up from there, obsidian. Obsidian, the shiny black stuff, volcanic glass. That's going to be able to be pressure flaked pretty easily. And then you have the tough stuff. This is unheated Texas flint. Really, really difficult to flint nap. And then here's just a little jasper type of material, also very difficult to pressure flake. Next, let's talk about your pressure flaker. This is modern flint napping, so I'm using copper embedded in a Dacron handle. And you can have a dull pressure flaker, or you can have a sharp pressure flaker. I usually start with the dull pressure flaker to get the initial flakes across the piece. The next thing to think about is what you're going to put the piece on while you're flint napping. And I like these rubber pads that you can buy, again through a flint napping supply store like Neolithics. It's got a little shallow groove in it, that's where the flake travels. And this allows you to hold this in your hand with the piece, and you've got a nice little pocket where your pressure flaker is going to drive the flake into. This is 3 8 inch glass. I wouldn't even bother with anything less than that. And you absolutely want to make sure that the edges are nice and ground down. That's going to give you a nice surface for the pressure flaker to grab onto. So I usually just take a piece of a grindstone. So close up, here's what we're talking about. You put the piece in your hand and against the pad and you really don't want to put a lot of pressure down on it like this. You really want to kind of support it almost like this because you're driving flakes towards your fingers. And once you get that settled, you want to get your pressure flaker on just the very, very millimeter edge of the piece. If you come up too far, it's either going to break the piece completely or you're going to get a big divot. If you're not down here very well, it's going to flip off. So you simply put it up against that piece like this and then press in and down a little bit. And I like to support it against my leg. So let's give it a shot. You load it up with pressure and then drive it in. Okay. Now when you flip that over, the first little flake is always going to be kind of disappointing. But as you build upon these, the flakes are going to drive further and further. You want to get the glass or whatever material out of the little valley. So now let's give it another try. Okay, you see how that flake went further? And the next one, I would predict the next flake is going to go at least halfway across this piece. I'm moving over maybe about a quarter of an inch. As predicted, that flake traveled a lot further. And this, I call this a fingernail. It's usually just a thin little piece of the glass or material. But the point here is that if you do this all the way up along that edge, then flip the piece over and come at it from this direction, those flake scars are gonna meet in the middle and you'll have a nice cleared face. Now let's try some other materials. This is a nice shiny black obsidian underneath all of this powder, all of this dust from the tile saw. Again, I'm going to give it a nice rough edge. And I'm going to come in and just put the pressure flaker here and try to drive as deep as I can. Again, we've got a circular initial flake scar. Now I'm going to come over, maybe to about here, and it'll probably drive more than halfway across the face. So I load it back up, put my pressure flaker in position. Oh, 
Okay, so what's happening here is it actually is going a little too deep. I came too far up the piece. So I'm going to come just over right here, just the very, very, very edge, and that'll actually drive further than if I come up towards the midline. Okay, see, we're starting to get a pattern, and this is good because coming from this side, I can easily hit it on the halfway point. In fact, let me show you just to prove my point. All right, no problem. Cleared right across that face. And so you can continue doing this. Let's try a harder material. This is a really difficult type of material to flint nap. It's a very gritty, kind of sandy jasper. And you don't want your piece more than a couple inches wide. This is actually a little wider than I would prefer, but let's see how far I can drive a flake in. I don't expect it's gonna be very far. This is about a quarter inch thick. Got some glass in there, it's all right. And let's give it a try. Okay, there's our initial little flake, nowhere near the halfway point. Why don't I continue coming down here in a line and see if the flake scars get longer, but I actually don't think I can make it all the way to the middle. Okay, we're just getting more of the same. Again, don't be disappointed if your flakes don't travel very far on different types of material. Let's try a completely different approach to pressure flaking this. In fact, it's not gonna be pressure flaking, it's gonna be indirect percussion. So let's strap up. This is a Dacron handle with a piece of copper in there. And I've got a strap, and here's how I do it. Take a loop and put it around the front, put it around the front end. Bring this underneath, over your leg, and then tighten it in. If you want some padding, sometimes you can put a glove underneath here, because it's gonna be tight against your leg. And strap it down really hard, and then I usually come back and forth a few times with the excess strap. And now what I'm going to do is hold the piece up against the copper point like this and then strike it with a heavy copper bopper that's got lead inside. And unfortunately, we can't use our pad, so we're gonna have to hold it in our hand. I'm gonna put a glove on just to make sure I don't completely sever a finger, right? Okay, again, I don't know how far this'll, this'll drive a flake, but let's give it a try. I keep the pressure on the back like this, and line up that point, hold it right against where you normally would pressure flake. All right, look at that. That flake is easily to the middle. Let me try another one next to it. Again, that flake went all the way to the middle. So, you could keep doing this back and forth, and I think you could get a pretty respectable piece out of that. Okay, I've just got the tail end to work. But you can see, I've got that classic matching pressure flaking pattern. They meet in the middle, no problem. From here, what you would do is go all around the piece and then zigzag your edge and just give it the final sharp edge.